The Alfred Massachusetts Mystery was a series of strange events that happened over the course of many months. The following dates contain information from police reports and from actual witnesses of the events that transpired. All dates occur in order from which they happened. All dates are listed, are only dates of major events. Minor occurrences are not listed. August 12, 2005. A plumber by the name of Henry Miller was called upon by the Davis residents. The Davis family was complaining of a strange tapping noise coming from the bathroom walls. Mr. Davis suggested it was a plumbing problem. Miller was unable to find the source of the tapping. August 15, 2005. Mr. and Mrs. Davis were woken by the screams of Jonathan Davis, 10 to 12 weeks of age, at approximately 1 a.m. The couple found the baby with bruises on his back and a small cut on his right cheek. They then called the police, who arrived shortly. A small investigation concluded that the crib holding the baby was a fault for the, for the injuries. August 23, 2005 Mr. Davis left on a plane to Carson City, Nevada, on the business trip at 7 a.m. Miss Davis and her three children were alone at the residence. At approximately 9.30 p.m., Charlie Davis, three years of age, complained of a strange sound coming from Jonathan's room. Miss Davis ran to the room only to find that Jonathan was not in the room. The police arrived at 9.47. The only evidence of disturbance was an open window and scratch marks on the crib. The scratch marks appeared to be human but contained no DNA evidence. August 24, 2005. Mr. Davis arrived home to his distraught family. September 3rd, 2005. The police had to be receiving multiple reports of a woman screaming and crying at the Davis residence. Police arrived quickly, only to find that nobody was in the home. The Davis family had decided to fly to Sacramento to be in the comfort of Miss Davis's grandmother. The officers on duty at the scene reported that they heard no screaming or crying. However, they did report hearing a soft tapping on the walls. October 6, 2005. The Davis family decided they wanted to sell their house. We decided that the house brought back too many bad memories after the disappearance of Johnny. We could not even bring ourselves to look at the house, stated Mr. Davis. Mrs. Davis refused to comment. March 15, 2006. The Hansen family moved into the house. They were reported to have heard the same soft tapping that had been plaguing the Davis family. March 18, 2006. Colby Hansen, age 7, woke his parents up at 11.31 p.m. He told his parents that he saw a thin man in the hallway. Mr. Hansen went to investigate but found nothing. Colby slept in his parents' room for the following week. April 1, 2006. Mr. Hansen was home from work early. He was reported to have been waiting for his wife to come home from cosmetic school. About the time his wife should have been home, he heard a voice whisper his name. He turned around only to see a brief glimpse of a white dress heading into the other room. He ran into the room but found nothing. He confided in his wife, but she dismissed the story as an April Fool's prank. April 5, 2006 Miss Hansen woke up at around 6.30 a.m. She reported that she had heard somebody calling her name. She sat up in time to see a white dress heading into Colby's room. She ran to his bed in a panic, but nothing was out of the ordinary. April 6, 2006. Colby Hansen woke up in the morning very frightened. He told his parents about a frightening dream that he had the previous night. He reported that he had seen his mother run into his room with a frantic look on her face. When she reaches Colby's room, she crouched down and made sure that her son was uninjured. Colby said that she seemed relieved, but behind him was a figure without eyes holding a crying baby. Miss Hansen did not tell her anyone what had happened that night before. April 10, 2006. Mr. Hansen called the hospital. He told doctors that he thought something was very wrong with his wife. Mr. Hansen brought his wife to the hospital for evaluation. April 11, 2006. Miss Hansen's doctor reported that she was undergoing symptoms similar to those of PTSD. May 22, 2006. Miss Hansen's mental state worsened to the point of insanity. Mr. Hansen reported that she had often rambling about people in the walls, and the baby doesn't belong to you. 
Mr. Hansen had been planning to take her to a mental institution and finally went through with the plan on this date. May 31, 2006. Miss Hansen was found dead in the bathroom of her institution. Nurses reported that she had locked herself inside the bathroom and would not come out. Police found that she had been through her radial artery. The words, check the walls, were written in her blood on the wall. June 1, 2006. Mr. Hansen learned about his wife the following day. He was hesitant to tell his son because Colby had believed that there was still hope for his mother. Mr. Hansen was surprised to find that his son did not react with any emotion of the incident. Colby s simply stated, Mother was right. June 5, 2006, approximately 4.30 p.m. Mr. Hansen returned home from work. He saw his son's backpack and books, but Colby was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Hansen soon found his son hanging from a hook in the ceiling. The room was completely bare except for Colby's bed. The bed was covered in scratches. A few of the scratches were near the bottom of the bed spelled out, he did it for the baby. June 5, 2006, 4.37 p.m. Mr. Hansen ran outside with his phone and called the police. The police reported that they could hardly hear what he was saying. All they were able to hear from Mr. Hansen was his address. The only other thing they could hear was the, a woman repeating the phrase, Check the walls, check the walls, check the walls. June 5, 2006, 4.49 p.m. The police went into the house and found the body. Mr. Hansen was reported to be outside sobbing. When the police went into the house, it was completely empty. There was no furniture or other belongings in the house. Arrows, later found to be drawn in blood, led them to the room Colby had supposedly hung himself. A red X was printed on the walls with blood. June 6, 2006. The police had come to a decision to break through the wall. They hit the wall with an X and immediately formed a dark hole in the wall. The room was reported to have a very strong odor as soon as the X broke through the wall. The police found 14 bodies hidden in the walls. Aftermath. The bodies. The police found 15 bodies in total. 11 of them were related to a woman named Elizabeth Natalie Brooks. The walls contained her husband, both of her parents, her five children, her brother, her two sisters. The 12th body could not be identified. The 13th body was of Colby Hansen, and the 14th was of Jonathan Davis. The Davis family, the family died in a plane crash on June 5th. The Davis family suffered the only casualties on the plane. Charlie Davis was found to have a journal on his person. He had written a short story about the woman in the walls. Mr. Hansen, Carl Hansen, was sent into a coma on March 15, 2007. He died on June 6. Nurses reported hearing a soft tapping on the walls before he died. Elizabeth Brooks Elizabeth Brooks was born on June 6, 1938. She married Edward Brooks in 1964. It was a fantastic relationship. Everything changed after her fifth child turned seven. Elizabeth wanted another child, but Edward refused. Elizabeth kept pestering him until he, like Elizabeth's family, decided to beat her. She remained quiet for many years until she decided to call for help in 1987. Edward caught her with the phone, so he grabbed Elizabeth and beat her to death. He hit her in the crawl space between the walls. He also killed all of Elizabeth's family, including his own children, just in case they started to become suspicious. Edward later confessed the entire crime to the police except for where he hid the bodies. He sent a letter directly to the police and then shot himself. Elizabeth's body was not found until June 6, 2006. Police found her in the crawlspace clutching the sixth child she so badly desired. <laughs>